Story Recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror and action film called Love, Death, and Robots Bad Traveling. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Ages passed on distant alien oceans, sailors hunted the great Jabel Shark. However, ships were often lost during these dangerous voyages. Thus, such vessels were said to have a bad traveling. One vessel treads the dangerous ebbs of the current at night when a thanapod, a giant crab-looking creature, attacks them from the leeward side. Thrown into chaos at the monstrous creature's attack, the crew takes various weapons and readies for attacks. But the thanapod easily overpowers them, throwing some crew members off the ship. When one tries to throw an axe at the thanapod, its hard shell easily deflects the blade. Thus, the thanapod grabs the sailor with its pincer before shoving him into its mouth, much to the horror of the other crew members who soon meet the same fate. Just as the thanapod drags a crew member named Turk, it retreats down to the ship's compartment. At the end of the catastrophe, Sirt, their youngest crewmate, vomits. Though the immediate threat of danger is gone, the thanapod resides within their ship, fully eliminating their safety. With their captain gone, Torin, one crewmate, proposes a random process of choosing who checks on the creature by seeing who will draw the short stick, saying it's the fairest way to go about the situation. Torin makes Sirt go first, who luckily pulls out one of the longer sticks. Afterward, Melis goes forth to draw a stick for himself and his brother, Kallis, who got injured in the attack. Just as one of their female crewmates, Shantra, steps up to draw, Jorvan, the crewmate with the largest physique, blocks her path before drawing for himself. Though Jorvan gets the unlucky short stick, he assumes the leadership position instead, pretending that that's what they've been drawing for. Turning the tables on Torin, Jorvan says he'll be the one to choose who checks on the Thanapod, much to the confusion of their crewmates. Throwing Torin on the deck, the crew is left with no choice but to agree with Jorvan. After being outnumbered, Torin willingly volunteers to check on the Thanapod, telling them that he'll report what he sees. They open the door for him to the compartment and Shantra hands him a sword for his defense. Trudging down the stairs in anxious fear, Torin soon arrives downstairs and sees the Thanapod amidst the Jabel sharks hanging from hooks. The humongous crustacean skitters straight to Torin, so he runs away and throws the sword at the Thanapod. Fortunately, the creature is too wide to fit through the staircase, but it smashes into the wall strong enough to trip Torin in his steps. Unable to reach for Torin to become its next meal, the Thanapod takes out one of its victims, Turk, and attaches a part of itself to the halved corpse's body, allowing itself to use the corpse as a voice box. Through the corpse, the Thanapod is able to communicate with Torin, asking him to sail to fight an island so it can eat meat. Despite the bizarre situation, Torin attempts to strike a bargain with the Thanapod. Most importantly, Torin tells the creature that he is the only one who can keep the ship on a straight keel. Thus, Torin should be kept intact and unconsumed if the Thanapod wants to get to fight an island to eat meat. When Torin says that, the Thanapod backs away in understanding, so Torin gains the bravery to stand up and step closer, asking for one more thing. The Thanapod barfs out the insides of its previous victim so Torin can fish through it and find a key. Later, Torin finally gets back above deck, where the rest of the crewmates wait for his arrival. When they ask for the updates, Torin just walks past them without saying a word before he runs up to the captain's helm. Inside, he dives for a locked box underneath the bed, taking out a gun just as the rest catches up to him. Torin points the gun at Jorvan before revealing that he was able to negotiate with the Thanapon. Thus, they must also negotiate with him now. Telling them to listen carefully, Torin announces that the Thanapod speaks. Although Shantra finds it unbelievable, Torin mentions that he has no patience to explain further rather than the fact that the Thanapod wants passage to fight an island, the nearest inhabited island. However, Jorvan points out that the Thanapod does what it pleases, still in disbelief that Torin will be the only one to go against it. Torin explains that if they transport the Thanapod to fight an island, then they have nothing to feed it because it has acquired a taste for human flesh. At the mention of that grim truth, Jorvan points toward the injured Kallis, suggesting him as a meal for the Thanapod, saying he's already half done anyway. Right away, Melis stands in front of his brother in defense, asserting that Kallis is half more alive than anyone else would be after pointing a crooked finger toward his brother. Torin puts a stop to their argument, saying they all reside together in this misfortune. Although Shantra points out that the situation puts them right back where they started, Torin agrees, saying they find themselves faced with a grim and terrible decision. However, Torin turns to Jorvan, saying a decision has already been made. 
With everyone understanding Torrent's words, two crewmates drag Jorvan toward the ship's grate, throwing him for the Thanapod to feast on. Torrent lingers to watch the slaughter, ensuring that the greatest threat to his leadership is eliminated. As Torrent continues to spearhead the ship, he shows them the voyage toward Fiden Island, but due to the wind's direction, it'll take them a day and a half to get there. However, Torin reminds all of them that if they satisfy the Thanapod's demand, that will mean unleashing such a danger to the unsuspecting citizens of Fiden Island. Thus, Torin proposes another plan. Instead of taking the Thanapod to Fiden, they can reroute and take the creature to a farther yet deserted island, hoping they can voyage there without the creature realizing. It's a plan that will help them save countless innocent lives. Noticing that no one else seems to support Torrent's alternate suggestion, he proposes to impose an anonymous ballot voting so everyone can choose which plan they prefer. Torrent tells them that a circle will indicate a vote towards sailing to the deserted island despite the risk, but an X means they wish to fulfill the creature's wish. As the voting begins, Torrent reminds them to let their conscience be their guide. After papers have filled the box, Torrent lets everyone wait for a moment while he checks the ballots. When he goes outside, he confesses to everyone that he marked the ballots with folded corners or irregular edges to make sure he could identify whose paper was whose, once he handed them out. This allowed him to identify two cowards in their midst, those who would gladly betray a stranger if it meant saving their own skin. Pulling out his gun, Torin makes Smellis step to the side as he keeps his eyes on Sirt. Closing his eyes shut, Sirt waits for death by Torin's gun. However, Torin aims his gun on Melis instead, successfully using one bullet to take out both him and his brother, Callus, who's standing behind him. The brothers' dead bodies tumble down the stairs as Torin explains that it was a necessary step because now, they are united in spirit, goal, and purpose. With that, Torin orders Superin to change their course toward the uninhabited island. Afterward, the crewmates throw Melis and Callus's bodies for the Thanapod as Torin hopes that by doubling the meal, they can stall for double the time before they'd need to sacrifice another crewmate. While up in the crow's nest, Torin surveys their voyage, unaware of the mutiny happening amidst the crew. Hearing something behind him, Torin sees a man coming up to assassinate him with a knife. When Torin catches him, pointing a gun toward the traitor, the man defends himself, saying the others made him do it. Before Torin could shoot, the Thanapod raises Turk above deck through the grate, calling out to Torin. Unable to do anything but follow the Thanapod's whims, Torin goes downstairs, only for the creature to remind him about Fiden Island. Though Torin tries to tell the Thanapod to be patient, he notices skittering tiny Thanapod babies scattered around. The Thanapod asserts that they're hungry and must eat soon, and horror falls upon Torin's face as he realizes that there are many mouths to feed. Above deck, Shantra points toward Fiden Island, getting closer by the minute. Torin tells them that he's willing to let bygones be bygones and forget the assassination attempt on his life because they're soon done with this nightmare. Superin doubts their safety with the Thanapod still below deck, but Torin orders him to stay within the course. That night, the crew attempts an assassination on Torin together, slowly sneaking inside his room to snuff out the candle and repeatedly hitting him on the bed with various weapons. What they fail to notice is how the blanket merely covers a bunch of pillows and a pair of boots. They only realize their failure when Torin shoots at one of their crew, the bullet striking the unsuspecting sailor in the head. Torin continues to go against them, slashing one that goes straight for him. Then, one uses a fellow crewmate as a meat shield when Torin aims for him. Despite being able to tackle Torin, he still ends up getting shot. Sir tries to run away, but Torin spends another bullet on him before he can escape. Counting all the dead bodies, Torn realizes that one man is missing from the group. Thus, he opens a chest to find one who refused to participate in the assassination. Outstretching his hand to help him out, Torn expresses gratitude for the fact. As the two throw the dead bodies below deck, the Thanapod crushes the corpses for its babies. While they continue cleaning up the rest of the dead bodies, Torin confesses that he was lying about the ballots and that he never really marked any of the papers. Pushing the man below deck, Torin clarifies that he never needed to mark the ballots because every single crew member voted with an X. Looking out into the sea, Torin continues to navigate the ship alone but soon goes down to the Thanapod. There, he announces to the creature that they've arrived. Unable to see the Thanapod, Torin walks around, telling the creature to show itself. Now, with an even more decomposed Turk, the Thanapod demands Faden Island once more. Walking towards a barrel, Torin uses his sword to slash the wood, letting the shark oil spill. While he does this, he talks about how Jabel sharks aren't as good of a resource because the meat is greasy while the hide is too tough for any garment. Instead, what Jabel sharks have in abundance is oil. As Torin pulls out his gun, the Thanapod declares that its shell can protect itself. However, Torin reveals that the bullet is not for the creature. Instead, Torn aims toward a lantern, unleashing fire upon the deck as it spreads with the oil. Running away, the Thanapod tries to reach for Torin, but it can't fit through the hull of the stairway. Because the Thanapod could climb out through the grate, Torin jumps off the ship and goes to his emergency rowboat. The ship starts to get destroyed due to the fire, trapping the Thanapod with the debris of wood. 
As the fire continues to spread, Torin rows away, watching as the ship falls apart in flames. With him, the only survivor to come out from the bad traveling. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.